First of all, uh, welcome back uh, to Europe, and I'm sure that EuroLeague fans are looking uh, forward to seeing you bringing some magic to European basketball. You are missed a lot, especially in those tough times we all are facing uh, due to coronavirus situation. How do you feel, you know, coming back from the States and getting ready to, to be on the court again? Uh, I'm excited. Um, you know, I, I love it over here. I love being in Europe. So I'm excited. I'm excited to get back out there with my teammates <clears throat> and hopefully bring some of those magical moments um, as a team back to the, to the court. I know that uh, you just came back from the U.S. Uh, how is the situation over there uh, concerning the pandemic? Um, I mean, cases are starting to grow uh, again, unfortunately. Um, as, you know, things are getting colder um, <clears throat> and it's unfortunate. Um, but, you know, people are trying their best to stay away from it. I luckily have been able to avoid it. Um, I've been very cautious in the way that I've been going around. So... I've been lucky and enough to not be able to contract the virus at all. I suppose that uh, you are injury free um, and you are ready to play against Olympiacos. Um, I mean, we went through practice today. Uh, I wouldn't say that it's 100% yet. Um, and we're all discussed with my agency and, and with the team and with the GM and with the, with the training staff here. Um, and, we'll, and we'll make a decision together. Obviously, I want to be out there. I want to be able to help my teammates. Uh, I want to be able to help get some wins um, and put us in a better position. Uh, which kind of injury delayed your debut to this year? Um, so I had double uh, knee surgery this summer. Um, I have been dealing with some knee issues over the last few years. Um, you know, taking a lot of medicine, getting a lot of injections in order to play. Um, so I would say, you know, the last few years I have been playing around 85%. Um, so this summer I was able to get surgery, uh, clean out both of my knees, um, repair some things in there, uh, get some stem cells injected into my knees to help with the regenerative process. Uh, it's very promising, and it, I've had great results thus far um, in a much better shape than I have been in the last two years. Uh, I don't know if you followed so far when you were in, this, in the U.S., but um, FS um, uh, from the beginning of the season is not the, the same team that we all uh, enjoyed last year with the best record in the regular season. Even though uh, the team maintained the same players, almost uh, the same coach, the chemistry is there or is not? Um, I mean, I would say the chemistry <clears throat> is there. Uh, I just think that, you know, we got so accustomed to playing a certain type of game. Um, and I'm not saying I'm the key piece or I'm the main piece, but, you know, we play a much faster game when I'm here. We play at a higher tempo. We play at a quicker pace. We shoot a lot more threes. We're up and down. Um, we put a lot of more pressure on the defense. And, um, you know, last year, for the majority of the season, I had been playing 30 minutes a night. So it's, it's just a, a, you know, a situation where we have to kind of change the way we played. And I think you saw that early on. We were kind of uncomfortable on the court, not doing the same things that we had been doing the year prior. The next question is a question that I always wanted to ask you since I read a statement of yours. Uh, in a recent uh, interview that you stated that uh, Coach Ataman is a coach that could coach in the NBA. Uh, yeah. I remember uh, a few years ago before you come to FS, uh, Coach Ataman was a, a coach who, ha who used to have trouble with the Americans, trouble yeah. with the Americans. And uh, I don't know what <laughs> changed dramatically the last few seasons uh, with you in the team uh, because uh, uh, for a player from on your caliber to state like this, something like this, um, for a coach that can coach in a players' league like the NBA, it's kind of weird. Yeah, and I think I think you just named it right there. I think you know the last two years that I've been here, and I know everybody saw my struggles when I first got to Istanbul at the beginning of the 2018-2019 season. Um, I wasn't playing to the level that I am now, and that was a lot in due part to you know, us having a certain system that coach wanted to implement onto the team and him being, you know, kind of stuck in the way that he had been doing things. You know, he's had success in different levels all throughout Europe. Um, and he had been accustomed to a certain kind of way. Um, but then I think there was one game um, kind of in that 18-19 season where against Barcelona, I, I scored 37 points off the bench. And it was a game where he kind of just let me be exactly who I was. And um, you know, since that moment, we've grown a better relationship. You know, we've seen guys kind of 
pick up their play. And I think it's because coach has been been less systematic and less controlled on what we do offensively. And he's kind of opened up his playbook and kind of opened up to a more unconventional way of playing in Europe where, you know, in Europe, a lot of the times coaches like to control tempo, control pace, call plays every single time down the court. But Audubon has seen that with all the talent that we have on our roster, you can kind of trust us to kind of play within a certain scheme. We see that uh, in this new uh, situation, uh, without uh, home court advantage, with empty yeah. arenas, uh, yeah. we saw that uh, so far in the first five rounds that uh, the competition has increased a lot. We see uh, a lot of surprises, you know, uh, so far down the road, uh, traditional European powerhouses like Real Madrid, Ceska Moscow, are facing troubles. We see, we saw uh, new teams, new teams uh, like Bayern Munich, like Zenit, you know, uh, thriving. How do you see all the situation? Um, <clears throat> I think that that plays plays into it definitely. Um, you know, I know particularly when you come play in Sinan Erdem, uh, Erdem Arena here in in Turkey, every single night we sell out sixteen thousand people, and that's it's much different to go play in front of sixteen thousand people screaming at you. And, and cheering us on as opposed to coming and playing in front of absolutely nobody. And I think it gives a lot of these teams, um, they go into these games with no pressure. And, you know, pressure is a lot, and a lot of people fold under pressure. Um, but when you don't have these fans and you don't have all the, you know, all of the, the aggression towards you off of the court, I think it allows everybody to play at a much calmer place where you're not keen to make these certain mistakes. Had you chance uh, have you have the, the chance to to see Olympiacos, your next opponent, playing yep. this year? Yep, I've seen them play. What what's your opinion? Um, I think they're they're improved. Um, you know, I think they bring Slukas back home was was big for them. I think that gives them that head of the snake, that that guy that can calm down the offense and help them getting into their sets. And um, you know, I think that that has helped them a lot. You know, you have a lot of guys on the wing that can score. Obviously, you still have Princesses down low. Um, and then you bring in two very athletic guys and down low and Octavius Ellis and Hassan Martin. And um, I think they're playing with more tempo. They're playing more up, and, you know, with a quicker pace. Um, and it's a much different team that you had seen in the, in the past few years in, in Olympiacos. They were used to be more defensive-minded, really tough teams, throw the ball inside, um, rebound, you know, just beat you up kind of teams. And uh, this year they're playing at a quicker pace, getting out and running and shooting a lot of threes and, you know, switching on defense and it's just a different, different looking team. And, you know, they've had success um, in these first couple of rounds and uh, they look to be improved. Finally, since uh, you are connected a little bit because of the draft class with the Greek freak um, that happens to enjoy vacations here in Athens right now, yeah. uh, I want your opinion um, on how he would perform uh, and what kind of numbers would he produce uh, if he played right away, right now in Euroleague? Oh, that's tough. What, what team is he playing on? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's say a Greek team. All right. Um, I mean, I think, uh, obviously, he would still be one of the best players, obviously. He's, you know, a freak. He's seven feet tall, can dribble. Um, and kind of get his own rebound and, and go take two dribbles and be at the other side of the court. So um, athletically, he'll obviously be probably one of the best guys in the league. Um, but there's not as much space over here, you know. And I think you saw kind of how he struggled at the FIBA level. Um, I think he would he would face more issues um, in these kind of games in yearly because you can't just take, you know, two dribbles from the three-point line and go dunk because there's going to be five people in your way and you'll get a lot of charges and it'll be difficult for him. So number-wise, he averaged about 30 in the NBA. So I would say he'd be around 23, 24 points over here. Rebounds, he would easily lead the league in rebounds. We had 14 rebounds a game, 15, whatever it is in the NBA. Um, and, you know, I think he would get fouled a lot over here. So he would, if he would make his free throws at a higher level, I think that, you know, he could, you know, average a lot of points. I think it also depends on who you surround him with. If you put him on a team like Ephes where, you know, we have five shooters on the court, then I think he would have more success. So if he wants to come over here and play, I think that's the place he should join.